Okay, we have an easy one here for you today. We've got just A factorial times B factorial equal to 24 factorial, and we just wanna solve for A and B. A and B are gonna be integers, obviously just because it's factorial, and we have this condition over here to the right that we're gonna want A greater than or equal to B greater than one. This here means that A and B are both at least two. That's gonna eliminate any trivial solutions using one and zero. So this just kinda of cleans it up a little bit. So let's get into it. I did a problem recently where we had A factorial times B factorial equals 10 factorial. I wanted to do this one because it's kind of, it's the same kind of problem, but it's a different case. But we will do the same kind of thing with something like this. We can use the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which tells us if we've got two integer values, these are both integer values, the prime factorization is gonna be unique. So that means the prime factorization on the right side is gonna be the same thing as the prime factorization on the left. Now, just trying some values, I think we can get close to it pretty fast. So like, I mean, first of all, let's do something crazy and kind of wrong. We can't have this, right? Because if A is 25, already the left side is gonna be greater than the right side. So our starting point is gonna be A values that are less than 25. So if we look at A equals 24, so then we have 24 factorial, B factorial equals 24 factorial. But this only works when B factorial is one. Over here, this condition means we're starting at two. So there's no way we can be A equals 24 either. So this case is also a, just kind of using process of elimination. Now I'll skip 23 just for demonstration purposes and we'll move on to 22 because this one we can kind of just turn it into a regular equation and solve it. So if A is 22, we have 22 factorial times B factorial equals 24 factorial. Now we just have one variable, so we can solve for it dividing off 22 factorial. So I can, I'll expand out, so we'll expand this out like this here, just to create cancellation when I divide off 22 factorial. Cancel here. And what we're left with is we're saying B factorial equals 24 times 23. Well, I'm not sure what that multiplies out to, maybe 562 or 552. But anyway, the question is, can we turn, can we have a B value that's going to be the same as this? The thing with factorials that we use, again, it's this prime factorization. If we kind of expand out B factorial, it's just B times b minus one times b minus two, all the way down to one. But then when you expand it out, you're gonna have some primes in here, unless of course you were like at one factorial. As long as you're at two or greater, you're gonna have primes in this expansion. And you're gonna have to have every prime in the sequence. So like if let's say b was 10 and we have 10 factorial, we're gonna need, it's gonna need to include seven, but it's also gonna need to include five and three, et cetera. So in this, 23 is a prime. So if B factorial includes 23, it also has to include 19 as a factor and 17 and 11, et cetera, all the way down to three, two, one. But it clearly doesn't, we've got no, I mean, in here we have twos and threes, but we don't have seven, 11. We have, in 24, we have, in 24, it factors as two cubed times three. So we have two and three, but we don't have five, seven, 11, none of the other stuff. So this is actually not possible for B factorial, so we can also throw out this A equals 22 case. So of course, we keep going and go through a bunch of different examples going all the way down to like A equals two or something. Although of course, it's gonna it become ridiculous at a certain point because then you start having the case where B is greater than A. But really what we wanna do is get back to, let's look at A equals 23 now. So what we're saying is we'd have an equation 23 factorial times b factorial equals 24 factorial. Doing the same kind of thing as this, solving for b factorial, we can expand this out like 24 times 23 factorial over this, cancel here, and what we're left with is b factorial equals 24. But 24, that's just the same thing as four factorial, so we have our solution right here of b equals four. The nice thing about this example is there aren't that many ways for this to work. I mentioned before we had that, we had six factorial times seven factorial equals 10 factorial. 
that's pretty rare. I think it's hard to find cases like that. But what we see with this example is kind of a general way for this to work because 24 happens to be the factorial of an integer. So like, let's say, so let's call 24 n factorial, where in this case it was four. So on the right side of the equation, we have something like n factorial factorial. Then the a value, we had that in the form of n factorial minus one factorial, right? That gave us the 23 factorial. And so this piece right here, the b value was just n factorial. So we could create different problems like this. So here we had our n value is four. So we could do, we could try n equals five. So five factorial is 120. So we have 120 factorial is gonna be equal to five factorial. And over here, this is gonna be five factorial or 120 minus one. So 119 factorial. So with this little formula here, it gives you an easy way to solve these, as long as the key is this number has to be a factorial right here. So if you had a factorial times b factorial equals 720 factorial, this here is going to be 719, this here is going to be 6, and you could do it like that. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.